explain about the title of the Black Balloon and where it came from? Um, basically, the Black Balloon is almost like the term Black Sheep being different. Um, but the balloon meaning childhood. That's like a different childhood. And, you know, there's a sort of a, a shadow and a darkness. Mm -hmm. Reese Wickfield actually said in an interview that the character of Charlie is based on your brother Sean. Is that true? Yes, yes that is. It's like I had many uh, family members or people who knew my brother Sean when they saw the trailer and when they saw the film were like, oh my god, who did you cast? Because they just found it a carbon copy and my grandma like will see a picture of Luke in the paper and it will say, you know, Luke Ford in LA, but you know, she just sees the picture and she's like, what's Sean doing in LA? <laughs> <laughs> so she's just convinced that, you know, Luke and Sean are the same person. Oh, well, not really, she knows it's an actor, but you know, it's like, oh, that's right, it's that actor. So both Tony and Gemma were, were basically cast right at the start. Um, then we cast the brothers. Luke was the second guy to come in for Charlie. He was the only person I called back for Charlie. He was Charlie. Oh, absolutely. Then, He's fabulous. And then Reese, who plays Thomas, I only called two, back, two actors back. I re you know, I was sort of was very clear what I wanted and, you know, and then Thomas came in. So the hardest person to cast was the father and he was the last person we cast. Were there scenes from your actual growing up that were used in the movie? Yeah, but um, sort of changed around as a sort of, you know, uh, alluded to before, like, um, like my brother did chew tampons, but it was different from what was in the film. Like, you know, as a young girl with another friend of mine and, you know, we were in primary school just learning about periods and all that. And my brother comes in with a tampon in his mouth and mum's mortally embarrassed trying to pull it out of his mouth. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> tampons, <laughs> period. <laughs> and so, uh, but we use that sense of embarrassment to then transpose to like, oh, wouldn't it be embarrassing if it was his, you know, the girls he likes tampon, you know, and it just... Sure. And that's how a lot of the structure went, was using events like my brother did throw tantrums in shopping centres and stuff. So it was just using how it felt. We were in a food court and my mum and there were with my brother and he just hit the deck and everyone was staring at us. No one would come and help. It was an absolutely packed food court. And I've never felt so embarrassed and humiliated. And it wasn't until like this big bikey guy came over and said, oh, do you need some help? We're like, thank you, yes. And he helped us get my brother up. But um, And so that was that same type of feeling I wanted, you know, we wanted to use in that shopping center scene was um, that aloneness when, you know, all this stuff is happening and everyone just wants to look and not want to help. Because everyone's staring at you and going, you know, whispering, making comments, maybe laughing, maybe looking shocked. Mm. But then, despite all this attention on you, no one's actually helping. It's actually a really horrible experience. Very hard to deal with, I'm sure. Yeah. Was writing the film a cathartic experience for you? You know, it was. It was like when we were writing it, we went through this great uh, process called Aurora, which is like a script lab, and they only pick like four scripts a year in Australia to go through it. And Jane Campion is the uh, patron of it. And um, Jane sort of took me under her, her wing, and I remember, you know, talking to Jane, and um, there was, I think, something holding me back in the earlier drafts. And she was like, who cares what people think? And I just sort of, it just really clicked. And I'm like, yes, that's right, you know, go home or go home. And then from that point, everything just went on the page. Everything was up for grabs. And in that process, I found it very liberating and very cathartic. And then since the film's coming out and had so many people who, this is their experience, you know, they've gone, thank you for telling our story. And then other people, 
who, like I had a, a, a friend from high school who was a very dear friend and, you know, would come over my house and hang out and, like, so she knew my family quite well. And so she saw it and she was crying and she goes, I never realised how tough it was. Mm-hmm. And she knew me, so it was a really... So many things like that were very cathartic. Tell me about you and Jimmy. Jimmy the Exploder. Yes. <laughs> what's, the, what's the story behind that name? I don't know. I think he's... I sometimes think he's just changed his name so people ask me that question. So... <laughs> <laughs> Also, with the film, it deals with very sensitive subjects of autism and ADD, which I think some people find difficult to watch. What would you say to people to encourage them to go see the film if they find these subjects too difficult to deal with? Um, well, I mean, okay, you do have a character with autism in it, but it's not just about that, you know, it's about, you know, there's young love, it's like how families keep together. There's a lot of humour in it as well. Oh, yeah. Down. It's a film that makes you laugh, it makes you cry, and it's a story about family. There was a very interesting plot device in the film, and bears and monkeys figure quite prominently. Are they symbolic of something? No, the monkeys actually came, because originally we wrote, um, I wanted Cats to be the musical at the end. And um, the right were going to cost us a lot of money mm-hmm. to, to have that. And it was sort of like a choice of like, if we go with that, we're going to sacrifice other things. Did I want cat? And as soon as, you know, the producer said, what animal would they be? Monkey. It was just, <laughs> Charlie is a monkey, a cheeky monkey. And then, a, and that's where that all came from. And the composer, Michael Yazerski, wrote a great you know, two songs for that. It actually felt better for the story that it was monkeys. And even the costume designer, um, I don't know if you noticed, like Charlie has monkey underpants as well. (laughs) Yes, I did. I saw that. It was just... With little bananas. Mm -hmm. And what about the bears? What about the idea of talking through the bears? Oh, that's just based on my family. My family talked to bears. They are. They're truly insane. (laughs) (laughs) But it worked. (laughs) What about, were there any funny incidents that happened during the film? Anything that stands out in your mind that would make a a good DVD gag reel? Um, oh, I mean, the one that I always say is the one between Gemma and, um, Reese in rehearsals. Like, I got them to, like, do dance off and and wrestle, wrestling, you know, like mock wrestling in tracksuits just to get to know each other. And because the characters are quite Tom, I mean, you know, and, Jackie's quite tomboyish and they have to be quite comfortable together and you know so to, you know was to break down this whole idea of Gemma the supermodel that was to you know for Reese and also for Gemma to get it you know get that so we did a lot of wrestling and so Reese is thinking oh I'll be gentle with her you know being Gemma and all and then we started wrestling and see Gemma's got two younger brothers so Gemma's like ah! <laughs> they just started wrestling, and then after round one, they're both bleeding. Had to call in the first aid kit, <laughs> and it was so funny because Gemma would go, "Ow, ow, ow, you're hurting," and then Reese would stop, and then she'd try, "Ah, I'd get back on top." It was so funny. Oh, it sounds great. Well, it did win a lot of prizes at film festivals, and. Yes. Obviously, it got a great reception there. I did see one really incredibly negative film review, which I thought was a little uh, over the edge in the way that it panned the film, coming from a critic in Chicago. I don't know if you saw it, but how would you respond to somebody like that? Well, the thing is, films, we make films for everyone. Like, as much as, you know, like, um, that's it, like, it's, every, it's everything, everyone's a different cup of tea, and not everyone is going to like every film, so everyone has the, the right to their, to their opinion, um, you know, some people just don't like films that touch emotionally, you know, some people like to see, you know, I don't like, you know, some people don't like to see violence, some people don't like to see sex, some people love seeing sex, like everyone's different and that's why filmmaking is so fantastic. I mean, I made this film for people who like to laugh and cry. I love films that make me laugh and cry. I love being put through the roller coaster and um, and there's a lot of people who like that, but then there's a lot of people who don't. So, horses for course.